And good afternoon, everybody. Chris Bartell here from the Cascade Pacific Council. I'm the Marketing Director and Communications Director, and uh, we're going to get started here in just a moment. And we're going live to Facebook as we speak as well. So I need to check that out and make sure we're we're all good there. And we are, which is awesome. So uh, thank you so much for for joining us, everybody. Really, really appreciate it. I'll keep letting some some folks in here as we as we go and i'm super excited about about today's webinar it's really boy this has been a a unique and trying time has it not in the last nine months and it continues so but i've been just so impressed uh, uh with how much grit everybody has shown during this time it has been absolutely amazing and um so we're going to talk a little bit about that today i'm really excited about this because this is going to be about how we keep scouts engaged in this covid world we're living in and our guest today is going to give us some strategies and i think we're going to have a pretty darn honest discussion about what we've all been going through during this this trying time but first here i just want to give folks a, a quick overview as to what we do during these webinars so you're all in the loop for those of you who didn't join us last year for some of these this is pretty pretty new and so we are doing these every single Wednesday at noon I know the time doesn't work for everybody but what we do here is we basically cover the latest news I'll do the, do that really briefly here in the first few minutes and some upcoming events and then we dive deep do a deep dive into the weekly topic with our experts and then we do a Q&A. And if you can't join us for the Wednesday webinars, what you can do actually is you can go to Facebook and you can actually ask your questions there in the Facebook event and we'll get to those as well. Or you can always toss those questions to me, to me as well and we'll get to those questions. And so what we do is then we record this. Each episode is recorded. It is actually placed on the uh, cpcbsa.org website under our blog, under webinars. And we actually promote that through our Thursday uh, afternoon compass points and email newsletter that comes out. So you have all the links there and everything. And we create this blog post and it has all the links that we talk about. It has downloads and all that kind of good stuff. But uh, first, I just want to wish everybody a happy new year, happy 2021. And uh, what a weird, weird 2020 that was. And I just wanted to share with you really quickly how much grit has been shown around the CPC and actually nationally and even internationally, just those who engaged with us over the past nine months. It has been just absolutely incredible. So a lot of you know about a lot of these things, but I just want to share the numbers because I think it's good for us to see like, hey, look at look at what scouts are doing out there, scouts and families and parents and all of that. It's just, a, just absolutely amazing. So uh, the sh short end of it is we did Advancement Academy. We launched that right off the bat, right as COVID hit in March. And we had thousands of scouts earning thousands of awards or getting close to finishing those awards. We kickstarted it. It all was virtual, totally the opposite of how we all do scouts. And so that was really, really amazing. And then we launched Adventure Club, which had all those great adventure kits. There were activity kits and guides and all this great material and collateral and and tools and all this. And we we actually delivered almost 4,000 of those kits. And what was fun is those went out to scouts and kids who weren't scouts. And so it really gave people an opportunity to test drive scouting, which was super, super fun. Also just wanted to share that we had more than 450 families actually went and camped with us. I know we had to close down summer camp, which is a total bummer for everybody. But what was really awesome and unique and interesting about that was that we had so many parents who actually had never been to our properties before. And so it was just great to have them have them out there, invite them into it and and see what it was all about. It was it was really, really neat. So I think long term, if we're thinking about the long game here, a lot of really, really amazing, great things happen, including the hiking challenge and scout quest. And we just finished the second scout quest. And I mean, hundreds of families have been doing this and done thousands of activities with us over the over the last nine months. And so all it is to say that that scouts and families and parents and volunteers, you just have been totally amazing and just shown shown grit. And one other thing I just wanted to share with you is we just had support across the board and, and not only COVID, but the wildfires. It was like, all right, let's add one more thing to the uh, literally fuel to the fire. And so, uh, but I tell you what, that has been so amazing. We have had such fantastic support for Camp for All, for the campaign. And we're actually, for those of you who are in units, we're gonna be rebooting that here at the beginning of the year and giving you lots of resources and tools to do that, the next round of that fundraiser. But just wanted to share this with you. This is really kind of fun to see. It's 
says here, we literally have enough support to rebuild every campsite except for one burned down at Butte Creek. And so we were able to raise enough money to rebuild all those sites. So it's just absolutely fantastic that the team is reconfiguring where everything goes, where all the sites go. And so it's given us some really op great opportunities actually to, to rebuild Butte Creek. And so uh, that, as well as if you haven't seen any of the news about our new shower houses, outhouses, and wash stations across all the camps, it's pretty fantastic. So the families who got to go out camping with us this year actually got to see those. So we have flushing, yes, actually flushing outhouses, which is shocking and amazing when you first see them and they're just fantastic the shower houses are beautiful and so lots of great stuff has actually happened on camp and it's pre preparing us really for uh, summer camp this coming summer camp so just really wanted to thank you all for your support and just spreading the good news and the word about all the great things that have been going on despite despite COVID. it's it's just been super super impressive okay quickly here i'm sorry for babbling on so long but just it's such great news and hey this is our first webinar of the year and so it's fun to kick in and let everybody know what's what's been going on so a couple quick things here we have round table coming up on january 14th so sign up for that if you haven't already especially for your unit leader and it's going to be great to just get connected with everybody again. We have a preview uh, as well. So if you go to Facebook, you can actually sign up for that. There's a link for that. And there will be a link in your email if you're on our Compass Points email list as well. And the candy sale and uh, webinar actually is kicking off candy sale. So I was thinking of popcorn sale in my head, but the fact that it just ended. But anyway, that's uh, kicking off on January 19th. A couple other quick things that I'll just run through here. Just some quick deadlines. So just listen for a second. We have a few important ones. So we have the Eagle Scout scholarship deadline is coming up here soon on January 15th. We have some virtual merit badge events that are really, really neat. So, and these are uh, actually hosted by Evergreen Aviation Museum, a, a lot of them anyway. So we have American Labor coming up. We have, as you can sort of see here, we have Aviation Merit Badge, Sustainability Merit Badge. So some fun, uh, some fun virtual events that'll be happening as well. Uh, Order the Arrow members, you've got an event coming up here on January 30th, so take note of that. For those of you who are interested in, in as we get, as things open up and as we're able to do some district events or larger events and campouts and things like that, there's a really great training. It's, it's a full day training, but it's a deep dive into safety and all the protocols and things like that. So if you're wanting to be a part of that, join us on January 31st for that. Also, last one that you can actually sign up for now is powder horn training, and it's going to be in the, I believe it's going to be at Camp Parsons up in the, the uh, uh, Seattle area. So registration is open for that. Again, you'll have links to that in your email for those of you who receive our, our emails. And uh, you can also check out the, uh, the Facebook page, the events page on the Facebook page that has all of it as well. And I'm going to share with you a couple links here. So as we were saying, the countdown to Super Camp is here. We have a little countdown, a little ticker on the homepage of the website. So check that out. It gets everybody excited about like, we're so close. So we're, we're excited about that. And for those of you who have scouts that are older, if they're in their teens, they can join us as camp staff. Fantastic opportunity to join camp, be a part of it. It is going to be a little different this year, but it's, it's, we're still planning on, on launching. So, uh, so check that out. Next Wednesday webinar is ideal for the beginning of the year too. It's all about emergency preparedness. Also at the end of the month, we will be having another summer camp update. Just talk to the camping team. Our plan right now is that every last Wednesday of the month leading into summer camp will be a camp, summer camp updates. So that will give you the latest and greatest as to what's going on around, around the area and what we know so far since so much still seems to be in flux. So anyway, a couple of last little minute, th last minute things here are the event pages. So again, I mentioned you can go to Facebook and the events page there on the CPC events page, check out everything there, as well as cpcbsa.org slash calendar, and you'll have everything there as well in terms of all these upcoming events. Okay, now this isn't why you really came here, but I have to give our, our spiel because it's my job about all the things that are going on. So anyway, I'm now going to introduce Colleen Louie. She is our special guest. For today, she's an assistant scoutmaster of Troop 376. She has a PhD in psychology. She is a former faculty member at OHSU. She's an adjunct professor at Portland State and is the mother of an eagle and a star scout. So Colleen, I'll let you take the ball and run with it. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm gonna bring up my screen here. And uh, I assume, Chris, give me a thumbs up if you can You're see good. that. Okay, thank you. All right, so first of all, welcome welcome to uh, Scout Engagement COVID style. Things are a little bit different, but um, you know, we just got to keep on scouting. I like the idea of that the grit has to keep going on. And uh, 
kind of two parts to this talk. The first is kind of why what we're doing matters more now than ever, and then to leave you with a toolbox of ideas, um, thoughts, and ways to make it happen. So um, one thing of, of course is, is that if you're gonna give a talk about engagement, it's important to be engaging. So I'm not feeling any pressure whatsoever here. Uh, one thing that can always help though, is just to keep it peppy. If you can't smile with Journey, I don't know what else to do. Anyway, a little bit about me. Uh, I think Chris gave a very nice introduction, but I've been with uh, the Troop uh, 376 in Milwaukee for a while now, and I've got a couple of boys that have gone through the program. Uh, I like to climb the walls somewhat literally. Uh, I wasn't, didn't know that that uh, Facebook uh, picture was gonna come out, so thanks for that. Um, Anyway, we have a good time. Um, I'm also my uh, we've uh, helped run the horse station at the East Side Metro Day Camp for a few years and uh, for uh, Cub Scouts. Uh, so we have a lot of fun. And one of the things that uh, I like to do is start out a talk with a little kind of who I am, uh, kind of creating an intimate conversation really helps in getting people engaged. And so it's something that I try to do especially when I'm teaching a 100 person psychology class and see a lot of blank faces. So back to COVID times, uh, I think we can all agree that it sucks right now, kind of universally. Um, we've got economic concerns, unemployment, uh, stress is coming at us from all levels. Uh, there's mental health concerns, um, you know, it's a lot. And then we have a lot of a lot of loss, and some of this stuff is obvious: economic, housing, um, loss of learning. So our kids are going through, you know, a very different school year. But there's also more subtle things that are happening right now. There's there's loss of routine. You know, your days look different. What your activities are are different. So loss of sports, lots of clubs some of your hobbies, all the things that you were going out and doing with others. And, and that's tough. So what we know about the way the brain works is that when you have something that's really stressful is your brain goes into flight or fight mode. And it's a way of getting through a brief crisis. It is fantastic for short-term threats. If there's a bear, you're, you're there. Your cortisol level, which is your stress hormone raises, that gets your glucose levels raised. And that's fantastic because it gives you the energy to get away from the problem. Now, the bad news, oops, where did I just move my thing? The bad news is, is that there's other things that are part of this fight or flight response that shut down. You know, if your energy is going to getting rid of the bear, your energy is not gonna go toward supporting your immune system. It's just not necessary. So, you know, your blood pressure goes up, your heart rate goes up, all the stuff to get away goes up, but long-term, this fight or flight response is not actually not so healthy. So again, long-term fight or flight means you're not as, you're more, you know, you're not as resistant to illness. Now, this can manifest in a number of ways, and this is a complicated uh, slide, but one of the things we don't think about is it's not just fight or flight. You can also freeze and see if some of these things sound familiar right now. Numbness, depression, conservation of energy, just feeling helpless, hopeless. I'm seeing a lot of this these days, and it's this chronic stress that we're dealing with. Another way of looking at this is, there. this is a very um, old style uh, picture, but it's the idea that you've got a hierarchy of needs. So at the very basic level, you want to make sure you can breathe, that you can um, drink, that you have food. And only when you feel good about that can you worry about, okay, do I have a place to live? And only when you have a place to live can you worry about some of these higher level stuff. And the idea here is, is that if you're really worried about safety, you're not so concerned about things like going to school or scouting. 
So one thing to be thinking about is whether you have scouts in your unit that are have food insecurity or aren't sure if they have enough internet for the for school or some of those other things that are becoming really important right now. Now it was interesting to watch this whole pandemic play out because one of the first things we did is we all went out and bought toilet paper. You know, everywhere the shelves were empty, everywhere there was lines for toilet paper. And this was really one way that people were trying to control what was happening to them. If I have toilet paper, I can feel safe. Especially when you look and you see the, you know, empty shelves, which, you know, was a little scary especially if you're a girl. At a higher level, what started happening was, okay, we've got toilet paper, we've got food. Now we're starting to see loneliness. You know, that kind of, okay, we've got the basic needs met, but we're not connecting with people. And I think one of the worst things we did was say that we had to have physical, excuse me, social distancing. We really don't want social distancing. We want physical distancing. And one of the things that they've found is that social isolation long-term is about the equivalent of smoking two packs of cigarettes a day in terms of your long-term health. It's that devastating. And so when they're talking about youth that are really struggling, it's something to take seriously, you know, that, that isolation. Now, of course, it's not just the youth. Meanwhile, the adults, I love this. You may have noticed that through stay at home orders and social distancing regulations, organizing daily tasks has become increasingly difficult. You may find yourself missing calls or meeting times, forgetting to respond to emails or misplacing items that are usually easy to track. We're all in this together. We're all having these issues. So, one thing that we have to remember is that it's not just the scouts that are disengaging, it may be parents that are disengaging as well. And parents can be overwhelmed. Parents, as we all are, may be dealing with issues of safety and insecurity. And so we have to kind of know where they're at. Um, obviously, for Cub Scouts, they, parents tend to be more involved. But even at the Boy Scout level, parents are the secretaries of transportation oftentimes. Um, this was uh, pictures from two campouts that were extremely successful. And my, my uh, mark of an extremely successful campout is to have a backseat that looks something like this. So the first piece of advice, and I'm sure you've heard this before, is you can't pour from an empty cup. You have to fill up your own reserves first. And everybody has a, you know, a variety of ways of filling those reserves, but it's whatever makes you feel better. Some people it's eating healthy and eating lots of kale. To me, the best way to serve kale is with coconut oil because it slides into the garbage farther and faster. So you have to find what works for you. Um, but there's, and there's lots of, of things out there um, to kind of fill your own tank. Talking with a good friend comes to mind. Um, now, one of the things that we know from uh, there's some been some big studies um, where what on what are called ACEs, the adverse childhood experiences, uh, and what this is looking at is just kind of the long term effects of childhood trauma. Um, and by the way, speaking of forest fires, that's a picture that my uncle sent me from Estacada from his house when he was about two miles away from the fire. He stayed, of course. So Kaiser in the 1990s uh, studied a, several thousand people and he, they, they said, okay, here's a list of bad things that could have happened to you as a kid. How many of them did you experience? Now, this is not an all-inclusive list. Um, uh, for example, pandemic was not on the list for some strange reason, but it's things like, was there mental illness in the family? Was there emotional neglect? Was there divorce? Um, was their sexual abuse. And they basically looked to see how many everybody had and then looked at their long-term health. And they found some interesting stuff. This is a overly involved slide. So I'm gonna kind of hone in in a couple of, of key points. 
The first thing is, is that most people had at least one thing that happened to them as kids. Um, the second thing is that if you had four or more of these experiences, your chances of having lung disease, suicide attempt, um, de developing depression, uh, liver disease associated with alcoholism, all of those things went up dramatically um, to the point where if you had six or more of these experiences, your um, lifespan was likely to be 20 years shorter. So these have some significant long-term big effects. Now, this isn't a perfect study. Uh, again, they didn't come up with all of the things that could happen to a person and they rated them all the same. Each, each thing got a point. So in some cases, a divorce may have actually been very positive for a kid. So, you know, it's got some issues, but it's still very telling how significant these things can be. Now, that's kind of the downer part of the talk because this is where we turn it around and this is where we can make a difference. Um, I suspect most of you are familiar with the story of Pandora's box. And so Pandora was given this special box and she was told she could not open it. And she was a super curious person. And so eventually one day she opens the box and all these horrible, horrible things come out like pestilence. But at the bottom of the box, buried deep, there was hope. So maybe there's an opportunity here. Maybe there's hope and maybe we can turn this around into something positive. We don't grow when things are easy. We grow when we face challenges. We found that if we don't expose kids to any stress, they grow up not knowing how to cope with stress. But those kids that we expose to stress, teach them how to deal with it, show them how to get through with it, come out doing much better. So this was, um, that picture of the tree is from one of our last campouts. This tree, the seed landed on top of a stump and instead of giving up, this tree grew. Nobody told him it couldn't. Nobody told him that it was a terrible spot. The tree just grew. So one of the things that they did was researchers went back and they went and they talked to teachers and they said, are there any kids that you know of that just have everything stacked against them, but seem to be doing okay? And what do you know? There were kids that just, I mean, everything seemed to be going wrong in their life, but they seemed to be doing okay. And so what they started doing was looking to see what factors were happening for these kids that seemed to be protective, that were helping them get, be resilient or have grit when it came to dealing with life's issues. So based on these things, they created a questionnaire because psychologists are, this is our favorite thing to do, create questionnaires. And so a lot of the questions, and these were things that they associated with having grit. And a lot of these things were, you know, close connections with family, but there were some others that really stood out to me and I've highlighted them here. When I was a child, neighbors or my friend's parents seemed to like me. When I was a child, teachers, coaches, youth leaders or ministers were there to help me. My family, neighbors and friends talked often about making our lives better. And when I felt really bad, I could almost always find someone I trusted to talk to. Isn't that us? Aren't we those adults in those kids' lives that could be the caring person that sees them, that cares about them? This is my youngest son at Baldwin, um, last time we could summer camp, having a Scoutmaster conference. Every kid, so every kid is one caring adult from being a success story. We're, we're it, we're one of the one caring adults. And so this is kind of the pep talk here. We're the caring adults that can help these kids thrive under these conditions. Another part of this uh, questionnaire that really stood out to me was, as a youth, people noticed that I am capable and could get things done. 
I was independent and a go-getter. And I believe that life is what you make it. Doesn't that sound exactly like the leadership skills that we're trying to teach? I mean, isn't that exactly what we're all about? I mean, we can't do so much of the outdoors right now, but my personal opinion is, is that Scouts is a leadership program in an outdoor setting. Now, maybe we can't do all the outdoor setting part, but can't we still do the leadership part? So the big message here is keep calm and scout on. It's gonna look a little different. Um, these pictures are from the spring and uh, uh, last spring and summer where we could still have uh, some outings. And uh, on the left there, we were making a catapult and then threw it out as a cohort challenge to some of the other cohorts. And uh, the horse doesn't care if you wear a, a mask or not, as long as you have a carrot. Now, this can be overwhelming. Uh, and it, but if you think you're too small to have an impact, try going to bed with a mosquito in the room. I love that. Be the mosquito. One thing that we're facing right now, that's a bit of a challenge that we have to kind of deal with is something that I like to call decision fatigue. And our brain doesn't want to work too hard because working hard takes energy. And right now there's not a lot of energy. So anytime you have to put a lot of thought into a decision, it takes energy. And right now everything takes more energy for decision-making. It's all different. You have to think through every little thing. And when we apply that to scouts, that's one of the first things that I start thinking about is how we can minimize energy. But don't worry, I got a plan. We wanna go back to routines and rituals as much as we can. We want it to not, we don't want the question to be, is there a meeting tonight? We want the question to be, what is the meeting tonight? What's happening tonight? So we want predictability. It relaxes our fight or flight system. So have your meetings. They may look different, but our meeting always starts with a flag. It may be on a screen, but it starts with a flag. This is what's working for our troop right now. It doesn't mean it's gonna work for yours, but we're setting it up so that every month has a predictability, has a, has a you know, it's gonna be the same. First Monday, we have a troop Zoom and there's, you know, they talk about what the new theme is. We have activities based on the theme. We have cohort meetings on the second and fourth Mondays, um, depending on what the COVID rules of the week are, sometimes in person, sometimes not. Um, fifth Monday, we're trying to encourage Weeblos to come visit so that they can get their visits in. Um, and that's actually, we've had some good visits with, with Weeblos and that's been really, uh, the Weeblos have really appreciated it. So it's a great way to recruit as well. Pack meetings, the same thing. Predictability. Um, I love this den meeting on the left picture because that shows the kids exactly what to expect. I mean, one part of wood badge that's uncomfortable is they don't tell you what's happening next. It's nice to be able to predict. We tend to forget about this next part. Monitor your plan. Are you getting regular attendance? What is happening? Are people coming to some meetings and not others? Uh, find out why, ask why, uh, get feedback. I've been told repeatedly that feedback is a gift. So find your feedback. And also go back to the basics. One thing I've been really thinking about a lot lately is why do scouts scout? You know, what keeps them coming and how do we preserve those things that they come for? And, you know, there's the parent push. Um, there's the, uh, you know, the self push, the self motivation, I wanna be an eagle. Um, there's self esteem, I can help others, I can feel good about what I'm doing for the community. Uh, then there's the social relationships and the fun. And we tend to minimize these two things. But if you think about it, that's a lot of why they keep coming back. In this picture, that was one of our last campouts. Those are, let's see, Two of them are Eagle Scouts and two are Life Scouts on their way. And they spent the afternoon after doing their scouting skills in the morning, throwing a ball up into a tree and then throwing items to knock it down. 
it they had a blast. So don't minimize the fun and the social connections. You're going to get certain people that are going to be like, ah, kids have it too easy these days. It doesn't all have to be fun. Ah. Fun is the glue. Fun is what keeps them coming back. And when they look at kids who drop out of high school, the number one reason they give is that it was boring and it wasn't relevant to their lives. Fun is, an, is, is that you don't have to have fun to learn, but it really helps you be engaged with it. So check in with your PLC. What does your PLC think would be fun? Can you, know, can you do scouty skills and have it be fun? And remember, every time you put them together, whether it's online or not, every opportunity you give them for working out what game they're going to play or what or figuring out something is a chance for them to work on their leadership. Also, social connections. Um, at our last camp out, after, again, having a full day of working on various scouty things, they sat around and played magic. Had a great time. Back to being the one caring adult in the room, you've got the adult to youth connections. Um, I would suggest not making those formal conversations. How are you doing today? I really need to know how you're doing to make sure that you're feeling okay about all this. I'm fine. These are the informal things. These are the just hanging out things. This is having fun with it, doing something with them that's fun. Um, we've got a cohort here that decided that they wanted to tie-dye t-shirts. Had a great time. If you're looking for ideas about what to talk about, um, this is a nice little um, list of things to think about. There's, you know, what is, what are their sparks? What are their passions? Um, what are the things that they love about themselves? Sometimes that's a hard one. Um, what are the things that are str they're struggling with? And then what are things that make them feel supported? Now, again, you don't come to them and be like, so I would now like to talk to you about the four S's. We shall proceed in order. I can't think of a quicker way to get them to shut down. But just seeing them, they get on the Zoom meeting and you're like, hey, is that a cat? Why is it on your head? Anything you want to do, just getting, you know, getting them to talk. One of the best things you can do, and this starts with Baden-Powell, is active activities even if you're online can it be active um, thumbs up if you understand thumbs down if you don't understand red sign green sign um, pine lego pinewood derby cars crafts something uh, anything you can do to make it more active more engaged you're going to have resistance often. Um, there's many ways that youth act out with stress. And um, one that I'm seeing a lot of is avoiding activities or events. So it's just too much effort. It's too hard to engage. Um, and, and that's something we're going to be fighting against. So we just, you know, that's when it's the personal reach out. Hey, I haven't seen you for a while. You know, what are you up to? Just that simple. Not that simple, but it's a place to start. When you start looking at coping, um, there's a number of, act there's kind of a laundry list of things that are supposed to help. And it's funny because social contact, productive or meaningful activities, physical activity, and things that are fun kind of sound like scouting. I mean, isn't that what, again, what we do? Uh, so you keep trying. Um, obviously, you meet in person as much as you can. And again, the COVID rules keep changing. So I'm hopeful that at some point we will be back to meeting uh, in person. Um, here's some activities that our troop has done lately. We, we're, big, we're big followers of open garages. Um, you can get a lot going with an open garage. Um, we stayed at a grandparent's backyard and it turned out she was this fabulous quilt maker and the VA wasn't taking her quilts. So all of the scouts that stayed with her got to have a lap quilt, which was a giant highlight. And you can see that these scouts in the one picture are showing off their quilts, but we keep going, we keep doing. Other activities, again, more tie-dye. Um, you know, biking is pretty COVID friendly. 
um, kayaking. Uh, in that middle picture, we uh, the the scouts decided they wanted to have a weird ingredient uh, s'mores contest, and the winning ingredient was barbecue. Um, let's see, honey mustard barbecue sauce on the s'more. Um, I did not win. Uh, thankfully, that was not. Uh, and uh, although he did say it was pretty good. Advancement uh, can still happen. We have the strange situation of having had 23 scouts all start a number of years ago and they're all aging out this year. So we've got a number of eagles in the process. Uh, this year we've already, since COVID started, we've had two female eagles and I think three males and a couple more that are on track. So it's been a crazy year for us for advancement. Um, these are all pictures of, uh, of some of the act activities, but you can still do. Um, it just has to look different. We even had a Eagle Court of Honor online. Um, the The family made the decision that they didn't want to wait, and so it was it was different. It was not in person, but it was fabulous. One thing that's also important and that can make a person feel really good about themselves is service. And so we've been looking hard for other ways to show service. Um, so one way that I found um, is Operation Gratitude. By the way, uh, Chris, did you are you going to make available the uh, um, kind of pamphlet I put together with all the resources that I'm about to talk about? Yep, absolutely. We'll have it on the blog post after this, and the recording will be there as well. So everybody will have all all these resources there. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I've got a PDF that I put together with kind of all of the websites and links so that people can find them and use them as 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 needed or wanted. Anyway, Operation Gratitude is great because they're collecting uh, letters of gratitude for first responders and our military, which is a great way for to do service. And you can do it at home. Uh, obviously, we just got done with scouting for food. We had a remote, um, we had remote location drop-offs and we had, um, uh, I think 1400 items uh, that we collected and turned in, which was great. There's also a place called Portland Backpack that's also collecting uh, care cards to be put into backpacks of food for uh, kiddos. So there are opportunities out there. There, you know, you just got to dig for them. And again, that doing something for somebody else is a great way to, to combat the blues. Conservation hours are still possible. Uh, this was for Portland Metro planning, planting events. And I think a lot of these have been canceled right now because COVID amped up a bit. But um, for our troop, uh, we're encouraging our scouts to go to the various schools and uh, parks and litter collect as a family. Um, my son and I did that just the other day because he's trying to get ready for life. Then there's being online. Um, I picked the creepy picture with this for Zoom on purpose because some days it just feels like it's kind of creepy. But it's interesting to me that teens can spend eight hours playing a video game but are struggling with school. And I think it has to do with the type of engagement. We have to think hard about how we can engage. There are advantages to being online. Uh, it's available to everybody regardless of location. You can have a, you know, some, somebody in the troop goes across the country, they can still be online with you. Um, and it doesn't matter what your health concerns are, you can still be online. And there's lots of uh, guest speakers and uh, virtual tours that you can take advantage of. We've had some former uh, Eagle Scouts come back and talk about what they were doing now and uh, sang some songs with us. Um, so there's, there's ways of making it work. Um, we have found that uh, there's definitely some rules that we've learned the hard way to kind of help navigate us through. And I sure, I suspect that many of you have found the same encouraging the cameras on so you can try to have some interaction, um, go over scout appropriate behavior, uh, including names. You can't be um, David the communist. Uh, that's not a good thing to name yourself. And um, we had to encourage one uh, adult scouter to change his background from advertising beer to something maybe a little bit more neutral. Um, you always have that happen. And I really encourage the breakout rooms because the smaller groups are when conversation really happens. Uh, you're going to have 
two challenges. You're going to have the younger over participants um, who are going to be like, that's my dad's shoe. And I don't know where the mute button is. And, 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 and then you're going to have what's typically the younger group that is, or excuse me, the older group that's can be pretty quiet, uh, can be very challenging to, to get them talking. Um, Sometimes teenager, um, the definition of teenager is somebody who's ready for the zombie apocalypse, but not quite ready for the math test tomorrow. So you just kind of have to meet them where they are. That's why I like that ladder picture so much. Um, you, you have to meet them where they are. One thing that you can do um, when you've got a sea of blank, unresponsive faces, and a lot of what I'm telling you is, is you know, this is a teaching your PLC how to deal with the blank unresponsive faces is sometimes it helps to start with something small that you ask them of. Um, sometimes a small question, an easy question is easier to get them to engage, which I'll give you an example in a minute. Um, sometimes participation looks different. Sometimes participation doesn't mean eye contact. Um, and again, do you have physical movement? Do you know when to just give up? We've had a half an hour. It's been great. We're going to end on a high note. And sometimes it's time to have a conversation. So, Mr. SPL, I noticed that when we were in the small group, you were clearly watching TV. What kind of example do you think that's setting? Um, here's an example of a small ask. Um, so have your, and again, this is an idea for the PLC. Uh, and the PLC may have different music they'd like to choose, but uh, I kind of had fun with this. So, you know, you drive them nuts with elevator music while they're making their selection. And then you talk about, hey, why are you feeling groovy? That's awesome. Heavy metal, what's your favorite? Part of it is just getting them to engage. You don't really care about the answer. You're just getting them to engage. And if they're willing to say they feel like heavy metal, maybe they'll talk about something else. Oops. Again, all of these um, examples and more examples are in the PDF that I've shared. Uh, I have never, thumbs up if you've done it, thumbs down if you haven't done it. Again, really easy softball things. Have you ever gone to Seabase? Have you ever gone to Jambo? Have you ever been at Baldwin and it's rained really hard? Um, that's a famous one in our troop because several years ago, there was a giant thunderstorm that landed on Baldwin during summer camp and dumped inches. And this was after the scoutmaster at the time famously said it never rains in Baldwin. And we've never, ever let him live it down. Scavenger hunts. Um, there's a number of different kinds. We found that you can't do too many of these because at some point the scouts go, I am tired of finding 20 things that I have to now put away. But they don't have to be 20 things. Uh, one of our favorite ones was you have one minute to bring back the weirdest thing you can find. That was great. Kids had some amazingly weird things. And then they got to talk about, you know, we got to talk about why it was and how did they happen to have a moose head with, you know, whatever. Or if, again, part of it isn't, the goal isn't necessarily the scavenger hunt. The goal is to get them engaged in talking because then you got them and you can do more scouty things or you can do scouty things. Find something that represents a point of the oath, or, you know, the, the scout of loyalty or true, you know, being truthful or whatever else. There's also things online for younger scouts. Some of them are on the cheesy side. Um, this knot so fast was kind of fun. This is a memory match game where you match the name of the knot with a picture of the knot. And uh, I was thinking that for uh, uh, troop level, that would be kind of fun uh, to do or not again. Throw it in front of the PLC, see if they like it. Kahoot's been enormously successful and there's a whole bunch of pre-done questionnaires. This is a multiple choice test. You have to have an app on your phone, but you get points for the right answer and how quick you give it. And uh, we've had a bunch of really successful ones. The OA are, uh, uh, OA's done a lot of that as well. Um, Another thing, uh, there's all kinds of scenarios. You've got a situation zombie apocalypse, 
apocalypse and here's your list of items. You've been uh, invaded by killer hornets and you've got, you get to pick one of the 10 essentials that you get to have in your kit along with the other things. Go into your breakout rooms and figure out how you're gonna you know, get out of the situation and share the results with the group. So that's leadership. That's give and take, that's conversation, that's negotiation, that's all the things we want them to do. Not an outdoor setting, but it's, it's, it's you know, we got the leadership part. Uh, our troop just did this one. Um, we, uh, they decided to pick what would be uh, the best Christmas dessert. And it came down to apple pie and gingerbread men, I believe, at the end. Um, I, I was voting strong for gingerbread men, although I did want to make sure that everybody was biting the heads off first so that you put them out of their suffering before you bit off their arms and legs. And so we got into a fierce debate about the proper way of eating gingerbread men. Um, this turned out to be really fun. Uh, the scouts really liked it. Scout Jeopardy, there are pre-done games just waiting for you guys to come and find. Um, again, it's a very traditional Jeopardy game, but it's online and lots of people have made Scout Jeopardies already or you can uh, seed your own. And so this is great for Scout skills. Scouting Family Feud, um, a while back I made a family feud based on 87 of my nearest and dearest uh, scouty friends that I put together. And uh, that's also I shared with Chris if you want to use it. It's, uh, it's not a PDF, be excuse me, yeah, it's not a PDF, it's an actual PowerPoint because as a PowerPoint you can actually click on the X and it will, you know, it will make the eh noise or you can make it ding if it had got the right answer. So that was kind of fun um, and you're welcome to do your own. There are a bunch of free escape rooms that uh, are fun. Uh, what we found works best is if we have um, one of the PLC go through the game first so that they can kind of help uh, break out rooms if they get really stuck. But that one's been uh, pretty successful. Um, this was a, a while back, we uh, challenged our PLC to um, create something with a hat. completely separate. Each, each scout was told, fill up about this much time, send in your video, and then the scoutmaster with his mad skills put that together. Uh, I don't know if you caught the name of the song, but it's called Quarantine. So 
they were said do something with the hat have it come in one side and out the other and then it got strung together and that was a lot of fun for them um, that was hilarious oh my gosh <laughs> i could not stop laughing that was awesome yeah yeah i had a i had might have had a kid in a dinosaur suit for that one i'm totally stealing that idea <laughs> totally fun there's also there's all kinds of uh tv games that can be modified um i'd love to see uh who wants to be an eagle scout instead of who wants to be a millionaire phone a friend multiple choice i think that would be an amazing troop meeting um also name that tune. How about I can tie that knot? I can tie that knot in 50 seconds. I can tie that knot in 40 seconds. I think we could do some variations like that. We haven't tried these yet. This is on my list to propose. Um, also, uh, as you well know, uh, Cascade Pacific Council has a number of activities uh, that are online. So I'll give a shout out there because I found some uh, good ideas there for both uh, the Cub Scouts and the uh, at the troop level. Um, there's also a number of merit badges that are online, some of which really, really um, are easy, uh, or at least lend themselves to being online. I was teaching a weather merit badge and um, showed a lot of videos of some pretty exciting weather. And uh, that really, the video format for weather was a really good one. Um, there's a lot of online uh, self-paced merit badges, some of which uh, have costs and others of which don't. And uh, mileage may vary. Uh, these are from different places around the country. Uh, so what I'm seeing a certain amount of, well, they, you know, the merit badge counselor, we haven't heard back from kind of thing. So it's, you know, mileage may vary, but there is opportunities out there for those that are trying. Uh, virtual tours have been fun. Um, there's, uh, you know, for uh, citizenship in the nation, the merit badge, you've got to go, you know, go and see things. And uh, some merit badge counselors may be okay with this, some may not, but it, it's still really a fun thing to do. There's uh, humane society tours, museum tours, lot, lots of fun things that are uh, more easily done on, online. And just all kinds of other games. Uh, kind of put together a laundry list of options for people. Uh, one thing that we did was is that we had everybody bring a random item of food uh, to the Zoom meeting. And then as a cohort, they went off into their cohorts and based on the items of food that they brought, they had to create a meal. Uh, some of the meals were really interesting. Some I would never eat. But again, going into a room, having the patrol leader take charge, having the negotiation of what they would eat is scouty. It's not outdoors, but it's scouty. So there's lots of options to take advantage of. Um, we, you know, holiday theme games, sharing your sharing pictures of your Christmas tree or doing the dreidel game. Uh, everybody bring a picture of yourself as a baby. Can you identify it? There's we our our, uh, our uh, troop just last week did two truths and a lie, and so as a cohort they had to create one fiction and two truths about their group and see if everybody else could figure out who was who. The bottom line is whatever you decide to do, it's worth doing. It's worth trying. You know, we keep it fun, but we keep the human connection. And the stronger we keep that human connection, the more likely it is that we keep it going so that we can be together in person and, and we can keep this, you know, we, there's going to be a lot more frustrations, disappointments, and irritations that children are going to cope with. See this as a chance to teach healthy coping mechanisms and acceptance of the things we can't control. So we're the models. We want to be the reason that someone feels welcome, seen, heard, valued, loved, and supported. So my last thought is that your heart is slightly larger than the average human heart, but that's because you're a scout leader. So thank you all. Well, thank you. That that was uh, really inspiring for for me personally. Actually, it's just full disclosure, I am actually the Scoutmaster of Troop One Hundred and Seven in in Northeast Portland, and uh, and we've been meeting, you know, doing a really pretty good job meeting online and and staying as engaged as as possible. And 
And, but boy, it is, it is now getting to the tipping point for me personally. So this was very, this was very encouraging to just these ideas that you had are just so much fun. And, uh, and it'll be really fun to review these with the, the PLC and just say, hey, gang, we've, I, I love what you said about predictability. It's something I had not, I had not thought of. And it's easy for us to just sort of vogue out on the meeting. And uh, so it's really good. It's really good thinking and having even that structure. We've been a little lazy uh, in terms of our structure when we're at least on our unit and, and uh, in terms of wearing uniforms and all that kind of stuff and doing the standard approach, you know, because we've been dis desperately trying to meet and meet as we have a small unit. So meeting in person, socially distance and things. And it reminded me this weekend when we did our Christmas tree recycling, how much we yearned to be outdoors and doing something. But all that is to say, these ideas online as well as offline, we've been talking actually a lot about service. Okay, we did everything in Christmas tree recycling with families. We had you know, two families doing it at one time and one family was out picking up trees, you know, so we were very following uh, the rules and, and uh, doing our best there and keeping it in small units. And, but it really taught me and made me think, and uh, we started having conversations about how else, what else can we be doing as families? And I think service seems to be a really great opportunity, like you mentioned, and it's something that I'm resonating with. And we're talking about at the council to say like, how can we, what kind of resources are out there, tools, and to, to get a, this could become a nice, a real season of service for us as family units going out and serving the community and just getting outside. You know, I, I've noticed for myself just wanting to get unplugged as much as possible. So, so this is great. Really, really appreciate your ideas. Well, it's fun because when you're going out and picking up litter, very oftentimes somebody's like, hey, what are you doing? It's like, well, we're scouts. This is what we do. Right. And that, that you never know what that connection will lead to. Hey, I've got somebody who could benefit from doing something like that. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so it's a way to be visible too. Yeah, here, here, it really is. And it's just great to, to, the kids really enjoy the service. I mean, Scouting for Food reminded us of this thing, of this, of this, uh, as well as the Christmas tree recycling and, and just really, really filled each other's heart, filled our hearts, I think, which is really, really important. I wanted to ask if anybody has any questions or wanted to share other ideas. I don't have the chat turned on here right now, but uh, what you can do is if you want to raise your hand and I can then uh, unmute you or you should be able to unmute yourself. But if you want to just, uh, for those of you who are online here, or we did have, uh, you can actually, if you're on the call with us, you can, uh, I'll actually ask to unmute you, all of you folks. And then you can actually, if you have any questions, feel free to ask those. And uh, in the meantime, I was gonna check out on Facebook here. We had, uh, someone said, let's see, Scott Haskell said, our pack has loved playing Zoom scavenger hunt. And I have asked, um, oh, whoops, I lost it there. Uh, and I've asked them to find some crazy items, but not a moose head. <laughs> so that's really 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 good and uh, yeah i loved your your scavenger hunt ideas is so great and even you know it's funny because the older scouts too they just they want to be goofy i mean you see it right there in that video that they created it's they just want to be silly too just because they're older doesn't mean they don't want to do fun things with play-doh or whatever it is you know we are, we're all kids at heart so hey just watching 17 year olds throw a ball into a tree and then try to knock it down over and over again i mean the adults were like okay well, they're having fun. Totally, totally laughing at that. That's, that's, yeah, that's, we could throw rocks at a tree, you know, a tree across a river, you know, for, for hours. <laughs> but they were unplugged. They, yeah. There was not an electronic to be seen. They were hanging out. They had, like I said, they, in the morning, they'd done their catapult and done some pioneery stuff. Hey, yeah. they were having fun. It, it really, it really, that's just awesome. Such great reminder and inspiration. Uh, someone else on Facebook asked just when this will be up for review. My P troops PLC meeting is this Sunday and we'd really like them to watch this before they meet. Great, great question and great point because I was thinking the exact same thing myself for my, for my troops. So the, what we do on these Wednesday webinars is there is a recording uh, that gets posted actually overnight and we will send this all out tomorrow so you all who are who are listening now but uh who are who are looking on facebook as well we'll have all these tools and resources there on the blog as well as the recording so yes so all the kids can can view it and, and other parents too because i think this is you just had really colleen you just had really wonderful uh inspiration and and really 
being open and honest about all the stuff that we are all going through emotionally. And I've been saying it for a long time, just there's this underlying undercurrent of, of pain <laughs> you know, that we're not living normal lives. And it's being, as you said, socially distanced versus just physically distanced. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, when you're 13 or 10, you know, that's even harder. Right. Right. Well, uh, it, any parting thoughts from you, Colleen? Uh, I think we, the, the big parting thought is, is we just keep going. We just keep doing and we keep doing the things and we keep trying and take care of yourselves. Um, take care of each other, uh, reach out to each other. Uh, and we, we just get through this and we keep scouting. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we have some upcoming webinars in terms of some other scouting activities. Uh, we are, next one's our disaster preparedness. We'll actually then do an introduction to leadership skills for troops that ties in nicely with this actually, and <laughs> as well as some summer camp updates. Again, we're going to have a summer camp updates at the end, uh, at the last Wednesday of every month. That's the plan of attack right now, but of course everything's in flux. It seems like these days. And so, so thank you again, Colleen, and, and such a great reminder and such a great example of grit. That's been ironically the theme this year that we had planned on showing lots of outdoorsy cool stuff. But what's so interesting is that the scouts and leaders and parents and volunteers like yourself have just shown that grit does start here. And it's, and it's really been inspiring to see uh, families and scouts, kids just sticking with it. And we're giving them opportunities to connect and get outside and, and do all these great things. So I, I really appreciate it. So Anyway, gang, thank you again so much, Colleen, for, for doing this with us today. And I appreciate your time. Uh, this has been fantastic. And we will see all the rest of you next week. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for Bye -bye. having me. Thanks. Bye-bye.